Hi guys, thanks for watching my videos again. I decided this week to do a video on how I got my visa to go work in Australia. Um, I get a lot of emails from a lot of you guys wondering what steps did I go through, how hard is it, um, and I'm here to make everything simple and tell you what I did. Okay, the first thing you are going to need when you are applying for a visa is a passport. Um, most of us should have them. But if you don't, the best place to get started on getting your U.S. passport is through the Postal Service. Um, I'm posting a link below and you guys can click and go find there. But you'll need a handful of documents, um, birth certificate, social security card, photo, and some other things. So go to the website, check out what they need, and start working on your passport. Once you've got your passport, there are a few different options that happen right here. Let's see, how do I say this? There are a few different ways that you can get into Australia that I came across. The first and the easiest is to have an employer down there already establish contact with you and they sponsor you for a visa. So that's probably the best way. They handle everything and they're the ones responsible for sponsoring you and bringing you out. Um, that's really nice, but for those of us who don't have an employer there um, and want to get established, then we need to go uh, a different way. So there's also a second way, a really common way to get into Australia, and it's uh, applying for a visa for their skilled workers. So Australia uh, has a list of people, and they have professions that are needed in Australia, so anything from construction workers, to mining people, to engineering, nurses, doctors, lawyers, the whole list you can look up. If your career is one of those things that is on that list, you're awesome. You can apply for that visa and it's easy peasy. Uh, for me as an archaeologist, uh, archaeology was not on Australia's desired list of positions. Don't know why, because it's fantastic, um, but it just wasn't. So. That left me the third option, and this is the route that I did, and I chose to apply for a working holiday visa or a work and holiday visa. Uh, I'll post links again below, and you can see see what they are. Okay, so why did I apply for the work and holiday visa? I chose this because I wanted to have something that was mine that I could use as a tool to help me get a job in Australia. So what I mean is, um, in an attempt to make myself more attractive to Australian employers looking to hire somebody because I'd already taken that first step and had a visa. So that was one thing they could tick off their boxes as something they didn't have to worry about with me. They could go on and look at my CV or my skills and uh, focus that way on things. Um, the meat and potatoes of the work and holiday visa has some stipulations and there's some things you should know. Most importantly is that they're only good for 12 months. So you can only be in Australia for basically a year. So that's kind of the catch. Um, the second really big one is that you can only work for a given employer for up to six months. So you could have 10 different jobs the whole time you're in Australia, but each job that you have, you can't stay longer than six months. Uh, the purpose behind this is the Australian government wants you to travel around. They want you to start in New South Wales and move to, you know, Western Australia and up to the Northern Territory. They want you to kind of travel all over the country and get a lot of experiences and kind of stimulate the economy that way. Um, for me, when I was looking at this, I figured, and the way that I pitched it to potential employers, was a six-month trial period. So given that stipulation that you could only work for one employer for up to six months, uh, I said, let's try it out as a trial period. You, I work for your company for six months, and if at the end of that six months you like me, then we'll move forward and look into visa options. Do you remember the visa that I talked about where the employer sponsors you? That would be the stage that we would move to from there. If I enjoyed the company and the company enjoyed me, we would be looking into them sponsoring me for a visa. Okay, so once you uh, apply for your visa, it's really easy. It took me less than a day to fill out the application, and the application covers basic stuff. They want to know your details. Let's see, I wrote it down. 
if you have had any previous applications to the country. They want to know about your health, or if you have TB or anything like that. They, there's a section where they focus on your character. Have you been convicted, convicted of a crime? Are you a murderer? Stuff like that. Uh, which I think is funny since Australia was yeah, that <laughs> Australia was founded by convicts. But um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, they also want to know if anyone helped you with your application, um, where you would like to receive written communications from the Australian government. Uh, it goes over payment information, and then at the very end, it's a declaration and consent where you assert that everything you've written is true. Uh, there's a tab on the website that calculates exactly how much to pay. It's really easy. I think it was a couple hundred bucks. I don't want to say any more than three or four hundred when I applied for it in 2012. Um, and then the last thing that I want to tell you about the process is that it happened pretty quick. I knew in less than a week that my visa had been accepted. They send you an email and it's pretty quick. So don't plan on waiting around for weeks or months at a time. It's, you'll know pretty quick whether you've been accepted or denied. Okay, so you have a visa, woohoo! The next step is to apply for jobs. I did a lot of research and the best site in Australia to search for jobs is seek.com.au and that's the best place to go for everything. Um, if you're looking for an archaeology job, search for cultural heritage management. But in the United States we call it cultural resource management but in Australia it's cultural heritage man management and a whole bunch of jobs should pop up. You can narrow it by you know which region you want to work in or if you want to get more specific there are options for that too. I would say this is the best place to use as a resource when you are trying to find a job in Australia. Your second best bet if you are looking to get there and do work in archaeology is to go directly to the larger mining companies websites. Now I say mining companies because this is the bread and butter work of uh, archaeology work in Australia. You're going out there and you're helping them do kind of compliance before they do all the expansion. So if you don't find anything on seek.com.au, go directly to the big mining companies. And I'm talking about FMG, BHP, and sometimes they'll have jobs posted there that maybe haven't made it onto the really big websites. So that's something to consider. So you find a job you want and you apply for it. Make sure you have fantastic resume and a really well thought out cover letter. In your cover letter, be sure to explain um, all of your skills and really emphasize that you already have the visa and can come out upon receiving a letter of uh, offer from the company. I think that really does make you stand out as an overseas candidate and works in your favor. Uh, just to share some of my personal experience with the process, I applied for a ton of jobs on seek.com.au and had a couple people write me back and you know, just figuring out what the best fit for me was, um, communication back and forth, which ultimately led to a Skype interview, and we reached an agreement, and they flew me out, and I had a great time. I'm sad to say that I came home. I wish I was still there, um, but, you know, I hope this helps you guys figure out the process a little easier, and good luck in applying. Let me know how things turn out or if you have any other questions. Thanks again for watching and I'll post my next video soon. Thanks.